The following podcast is a next level production. Aisha, what happened to you? Anger worked. Sana, it brought you back to me. I'm not Sana. We don't have much time. Get Sana on the train and protect that bangle. You have everything that you need. Panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about Miss Marvel Season 1, Episode 5, entitled Time and Again. So, this episode, the synopsis is The Bangle reveals to Kamala's secrets about her family lineage as well as the truth behind the veil. Which it does. Uh, it's a, a lot of it, uh, and I'm like moving right into our initial thoughts. With my initial thoughts, I loved it for the fact that you got a sense of family within this particular episode. Mm-hmm. That uh, Kamala actually gets to know more about her great grandmother Aisha and her grandfather, and see what happens. And we we get a bit of history about India. Pakistan and how it became where it got split, where India was like one whole country, something that I was a bit aware of because I have a lot of Indian and Pakistani friends. And I love how they surmised it up within this particular episode of how uh, to explain it to the public, because a lot of people are not really understanding of how it is. And I just like that they took the time out to explain how it split and why there is two countries now. And then we get uh, Kamala understanding all this heritage through pretty much her grandmother and then through the bangle itself and how at one point, spoilers, everybody, yeah, she's involved with her grandmother finding her grandfather when she was a child at that railway railroad station. Great, great grandmother. Great grandmother. Oh, no, yeah, you're, you're you're right, grandmother. I'm sorry. You're right, grandmother. Aisha is the great grandmother. Sorry. Yeah, Aisha. Yeah, and the fact that she did actually engage with her great grandmother too, mm-hmm. and knowing because it, it it was like a really lovely scene, and we'll, we'll go that into that within uh, when we cover the podcast, uh, cover the episode on the podcast. But you know, to me, honestly, this was very good and very endearing, and it was very family oriented as well as histor- historic for Kamala herself. Mm-hmm. And I just, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, it was, especially on my second watch, I really appreciated it more. And I, I think I got choked up more um, in the second viewing of, 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 at points in the story, just because it was so, so emotional. And, yeah. you know, it was, it's the shortest one of the season so far. I don't, I mean, obviously we don't know how long six is going to be. But it was it was shorter than all the others, like by about seven minutes, I want to say. So, but they packed a lot into it, and we got a lot of reveals. Um, we got a lot of setup for the the final episode, and so I'm I'm uh, I'm excited to, to kind of talk about this. But I, I you know I'm, I'm right there with you. I love seeing or getting a sense at least because I really I had no idea of the history. Of India, I'm just going to be. I'll be totally honest. Really? So yeah, I didn't really, uh, and so. Once, once I started, uh, w- once I watched it for the second time, I understood what what kind of what happened when the British left. They basically made India a free religion country, and Pakistan was where all the Muslims were supposed to go. And yep. so they they were basically forcing all the Muslims out of India and into Pakistan, into this this smaller country. So it's it's uh, you know or dom- uh, uh, dominion, not a. Uh, not a country per se, but a, a dominion, the, the mm-hmm. Pakistani dominion, I think is what they, they call it. And it just, it was just really heartbreaking to see that and to, to realize that that happened, you know, it was right around the time of World War II. So we're seeing that kind of other side of the world that I just never had been exposed to. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's really sad in the sense that, you know, it's like a lot of families were torn apart because mm-hmm. of the two different countries and two different religions, as it were. And 
Now, mind you, like I stated, I, I have friends who are Pakistani descent and friends that are Indian descent. And I respect their religions just the same as anything mm -hmm. yeah. as mine and yours and everybody else's. And when I was told about this, I'm like, wow. And when my friend Asim had told me about how he has family in India, but they don't talk, but mm -hmm. he's in America. But since he's in America and he's not in Pakistan or in India, he's able to talk to both families. Right. And he, he doesn't practice Muslim. He's not a practicing Muslim. He was brought up Muslim, but he still practiced a lot of the, the Indian religion, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. And I said, I'm like, oh, I went to my grandmother's. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So basically, he enjoyed the idea of the Indian religion and heritage more than his Pakistani descent mm -hmm. or, uh, uh, you know, his uh, heritage, as it were, when he moved here. Uh, he has a very heavy accent. Uh, very typical British in the sense that he loves cricket. So I had to spend countless times in the office watching cricket games with him, which I do enjoy. But uh, it, it's pretty interesting that I'm able to get that respect. Uh, I actually have a friend named Sonica, and she and I worked at Circuit City years ago. And I got to learn a little bit more about her. But she was a bit more Americanized. And she, uh, you know... She uses the same terms. I actually reached out to her recently. She goes, yeah, Ami, Nani, and er all those terms that of endearment in beta. Mm -hmm. She actually said, she goes, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Hmm. Uh, you were correct in stating that. And, you know, to me, it, it's a, an interesting culture, but it's sad that the country had to separate to, mm -hmm. because based upon religion. Yeah. And, she says that, you know, Sonica told me that she has family that is in Pakistan as well, and they're Muslim, but they do keep in touch as of late. So I, I guess religion as isn't as bad as it was back then in right. comparison to now. So yeah. people are able to respect that now. There, there's no wars going on, obviously, mm -hmm. re regarding that within India at this point, but... Yeah, it to me it was enlightening again to see that, and then actually having to reach out to my friends to actually get that information out. Nice, to me. yeah. So uh, we should move into our top five thoughts or our overall thoughts of uh, well, not overall, but our, our thoughts of like scenes within the, the show. Yeah. So uh, what we we already spoke about the hi historica. Uh, event for India and Pakistan, so that that was one of mine. What, right. what was one of yours well, as well? I love, I, I love that, and the, what what I call it is that Kamala gets her Marty McFly moment. You know, <laughs> uh, a little a little different, obviously, but you know, you called it early in the season. We had the foreshadowing of Bruno kind of dressing like Marty McFly from Back to the Future, and so we have this this uh, this part of the episode that you kind of already alluded to, where she actually meets Aisha and she gets that picture, and then she becomes the one who leads. Even though she tells little Sana, her grandmother, she mm -hmm. tells her, you know, oh, I don't I don't do stars, but I can do circles. But then, of course, she does do the stars. And and even she says, oh, I'm the one that did it. But I love that she brought that picture back and she gives it to uh, her grandmother, who then is able to show the picture to, to Kamala's mother. And they have mm -hmm. that bonding moment that is just so amazing. And uh, I, I just really, really, it just, that was one of those parts that got me, got me, uh, you know, kind of choked up that, that that whole thing with the picture and realizing that it was real, that she actually traveled in time. And then the bangle brought her back. And even Aisha kind of says, you know, it was the power of the bangle that that did this. And of course, you know, the unfortunate side effect of that time traveling is that we have the opening of the veil. So correct. Uh, a lot of what I liked about the, the episode, too, is very the very beginning, not just because of the intro of the historic value of it, but also Aisha and meeting Kamala's great grandfather, Hassan. Hassan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was amazing. That was fun to see because, you know, she was kind of like kind of acting like a peasant. And then, you know, he kind of treats her and I love the rapport with her. It's like with him and her about that. Uh, like 
basically he, she's ready to attack him and he goes oh what you gonna take out my leg well take out the bad one it's already bad anyway <laughs> yeah yeah I, I love that line that line oh what this one go ahead i don't use it much anymore you know exactly. so i don't use it, use it much anyway so it was really, it really i love that their love story was just amazing and that moment at the end where i'm getting choked up just thinking about it where he yeah. says where she says you know you never asked what i was running from and he said well it didn't matter because you chose us and that's what does that's exactly. what matters i was just oh i was just so choked up about that um that that moment and then of course the the heartbreaking moment that we find out right along with her with her character najima was the one who killed aisha mm. um you know and we would just get that that heartbreaking moment where um i don't know if kamala witnessed it or not but i definitely think kamala kind of knew and obviously she had already heard because Najima tried to kill her. So she Correct. knew that, that Najima had this in her, but to know that even, you know, 60 years ago, Najima was, was doing that as, as well. But of course, then she gets her moment, her, her redemption kind of moment there at the end where she closes the veil um, mm -hmm. and uh, sends a little, that's going to be an interesting conversation between, between Kamala and Cameron in the next episode, because he's, she's going to have to basically tell him that his whole Your family's gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we don't know the father. I was thinking about this right before we recorded, because I was trying to count. So I think there was four of them, right? The clandestines, there was four of them. There was Najima, there was yep. the dark skinned woman, and then mm -hmm. the two guys, and then the two guys, right? Yep. And we know the dark skinned woman uh, got, you know, disintegrated when she tried to go through the veil. We right. think we think at least one of the guys was killed by the red dagger kid. And I think the other guy may have been killed by um that other guy who was fighting with them. So basically his whole family, like what Bruno says at the end of the episode, his this kid's whole family is gone. Yes. Unless unless the father is unless the father is a regular human who's out there somewhere. I think he is, and I think that's what we'll eventually see. Maybe not within the show, but mm -hmm. later on. Because, honestly, these characters are being built up within Disney+, Plus for us to see them into the MCU. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do see Cameron again. And that, that kid with the dagger that, uh, I'm forgetting his name. Yeah, he. I don't know if we ever actually got his name, if it was just Red Dagger. I think he did say it to Kamala in, in the last episode, but I don't remember what it what it was. He was the one that was th that brought her to the beach with her, his friends. and. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. had a name. He had a name, and I, I don't remember what it was. He well, he's just a, but he, he also gives her the uh, the cloth over his face, the, uh, the shroud mm -hmm. that he used. That's part of her costume. Yeah. So yeah. she gets another piece of her costume within this particular episode as well. Mm -hmm. Not only should you get the uh the mask from Bruno, but she gets that from him as well. And she got the vest from the other guy, and then we saw the necklace, the the mom holding up the necklace there at the end. With so the little... All these pieces add up to her whole whole co costume of the, of the superhero that she is, yeah. which I suspect, I suspect we'll get that in the next in the next episode, probably I, at the end, probably like a Hawkeye kind of thing. We'll get it at the end, but yes, or or a Daredevil situation, right. like with season one where he has the costume at the very end. Yeah, and I I think that's where we're gonna be putting more forward into as far as when it comes to the cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. We already talked a little bit about, uh, Sama and Kamala bonding, but I just, I love that, that moment there at the end where, you know, um, it's one of them. It's, uh, uh the grandmother says, Asana, the grandmother says, see, our family is magical. And mm -hmm. Kamala's mom just has to acknowledge that. And they're looking at the, they're, they're looking at the photo album, you know, see the picture of uh, Kamala's mom when she was, went, uh, went following Bon Jovi on tour. And <laughs> I thought that was, that was great. The little mix up with the grandmother saying Bruce Springsteen and her yep. the mom correcting her. Oh, going, it's, no, Jersey. It was, yeah, <laughs> it's exactly, Jersey. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was Bon Jovi. <laughs> but uh, that was, it was just great to see that, that kind of restoration. Cause we talked about this, you know, and I think it was, what was it? How, how did how did um, Kamala's mom put it that she held Kamala too tight? And the grandmother yes. says, I didn't hold you tight enough. You know, and it was just so. It's more family oriented in yeah, the sense of understanding yeah. and parenting, parent 
child relations, you know, and understanding one another. So it's both on uh, Kamala's mother and her grandmother learning about, okay, we're learning more about each other. So this kind of uh, running back to Pakistan to go see her grandmother was was enlightening to yeah. everybody. So that that's what is what's so touching about yeah. the show and the episodes that we got, especially because it was only two episodes. It was like last episode, this episode now. Yeah. And we got that. And now, obviously, I, I'm assuming that the uh, finale is going to be taking place in Jersey City. I would assume. I mean, I can't I can't see why they would keep us in in India at this point because they, they finished that storyline. You know, they've yeah. closed the they've closed the veil. And of course, we have that ending moment with which we haven't talked about yet with camp. We haven't talked about Cameron yet that yeah. you know when his when his mom sacrifices herself you know she says his name and he gets that superpower yep. that he, that is uh very similar to what uh, uh miss marvel has and so we'll see how that's gonna how that's gonna play out with with him but you know you get that moment where he's in you know he's in bruno's little little apartment there and he realizes that he's had bruno's name wrong this entire you know and i thought i you know i really thought it was really touching the way when he realized that he had the wrong name, he said, no, I genuinely thought your name was Brian. Yeah. Like, like, because we, you know, this whole time, Bruno has been kind of, you know, moody and, and, and mad at the fact this kid is, is getting my name wrong on purpose, you no, know, and he it and, wasn't on purpose. It was right. just, it's yeah. one of those things. And I think there's a mutual respect at that point. I love that they get that moment. Yeah. I love they get that moment, that bonding, that moment where, where they do have, like you said, that mutual respect where they shake hands or they kind of bump, bump this there. But then of course the drone appears out the window. Cameron <laughs> damage <it>. control. <laughs> yeah. And so we now have uh, the department of damage control possibly being the big bad. And uh, whoa, that moment with the building exploding, you know, or the, at least the lower floor of the building exploding, we don't know. What yeah. extent? Uh, I'm sure we'll find out. That's one of those things we'll find out in the next episode is what's going on uh, there. But man, that ending, I was just like, whoa. Because at first, like I know the first time I watched it, when they closed the veil, all the clandestines are dead. I was like, so where is this show going to go? You know? And yeah. then, of course, we see. I kept waiting for an extra scene at the end, but they didn't have, there wasn't one there. No, nah, there isn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when they dissolve, they actually, you see them there, uh, when they do go through the veil, their body kind of disintegrates and you see a skeleton and it goes down to dust. Yeah. And then they leave. And it looks like to me, honestly, they do go into that other dimension when the clandestines leave. I don't think they're dead. I think they, that's how they transported into mm, that other dimension. Maybe. I think they died. I think their body disintegrated. That, you think I it was mean, like a Raiders of the Lost Ark thing yeah, when they opened the that's, Ark and that's that was That's what dead? I think. I think okay. that, yeah, I think it's done. But it, it, you could be right. It could be, they could have been some sort of spiritual kind of transition. Yeah, transition or maybe. Yeah, to, to go to the other realm. Because it, for all we know, they could have been given this, you know, physical form when they came to Earth. And maybe that, it's a that theory was their way that's just a theory i have but i could be wrong but then again we don't know with disney marvel and how they manipulate everything and this show is very different from the comic mm -hmm. and how everything was formulated especially with miss marvel's powers but i'm accepting and understanding and loving the idea of what we got now mind you if you wanted to go see uh what miss marvel really looks like you could actually go to Madame Tussauds in New York City, and this is in Times Square. And they actually do have a Marvel exhibit, and you could see Miss Marvel with the elastic-y kind of look, like she does in the comic. But she, the there's the bangle. You'll have all the same tropes that we have within the uh, the show that we're seeing with her costume. So it's this very same costume, if you look at it. But to me, honestly, I, I think the way they actually created the character and how they're they're giving us this particular character of Kamala Khan as Miss Marvel, I think it's really good. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it talks to a lot of the youth. It talks a lot about culture and opens a lot of people's eyes about the world that's going around about us uh, with with people who are different. 
So I, I really enjoy this in the sense that the powers don't exactly have to be comic book accurate, you know? No, but, and that's and you know we've said that before about the the MCU characters and and you know just under that understanding, especially these kind of outlier characters that we don't know a lot about or the comic book isn't like super popular necessarily, but uh, that they can do whatever they want with these characters in, in within the MCU, and so we'll yeah. see what happens uh, with her. Just like with Moon Knight, they kind of changed him up a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, and I thought and, that was amazing. I loved how they did that, mm -hmm. and then. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what we get from Miss Marvel in the next Captain Marvel movie because we know we get three Captain style Marvels with Brie Larson, uh, this girl who plays Kamala Khan, and we got Monica Rambeau as well. Mm -hmm. So, or maybe we even get somebody who's from an alternate dimension. Dimension, you know, Mon uh, uh, who is Monica's mother? I forget. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I. I know what you're talking about, but she was the one that was killed in Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, but there's always yeah. other multiverses. No, no, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying that's the character that you're talking about. Yeah, is, exactly. Is this, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I think... That would be I, cool. It would be interesting. I don't... I think I could see, like, maybe the, the second season of What If might explore some of these other Ooh, multiverses yeah. again. But I don't, I don't see the live-action Marvel, you know, Marvel Universe kind of... Um, you know, uh, delving too deeply into the multiverse. I think they gave us a lot of it with Dr. Strange and, uh, I think they're going to kind of back off on it a little bit. Yeah, I, I'd agree. Uh, to me, honestly, there is some sort of a peek at it because they're doing promotion for, uh, Disney world with, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the Marvel thing that's down there. But they actually do have Kamala Khan in there, too. Mm, so okay. check that out. It's on YouTube. So a lot of people, you got to check it out. There's a uh, a scene where they bring a lot of, uh, like, with Kamala and, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, the new Captain America, Hawk. Um, Falcon. Falcon, and, right. Well, yeah. he's Captain America. I mean, he's yeah, Captain he's America. Captain America Falcon. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have something there that's promotion, but they're all in this whole thing, and it's part of the ride that's going on down there. Oh, so okay. it's in consecutive of what they're doing with the movies. So mm -hmm. if you guys are out there and you go to uh, to the Disney parks and they do actually have that ride and you encounter it, let us know what's going on, too, because uh, I only saw snippets, and I thought, wow, this is amazing. I want to see more. <laughs> yeah but uh we we get kamala in there too so okay very cool so but uh, i'm looking forward to what they do with this uh you know overall with the uh the episode just like you stated you know uh, bruno connecting with uh cameron that was funny uh and and fun to watch and a little bit heart-wrenching too because both of them are basically orphans at that point mm -hmm. and they're living on our own they have to deal with damage control and literally that's how it ends off with both of them then we also see the difference in colors because Cameron's is more purplish, mm -hmm. very much almost like um, what's her name from WandaVision? Not Wanda herself, but oh, Agatha. Agatha, Agatha Harkness. She mm -hmm. ha he has the same kind of color and glow with his powers and his eyes. So you keep uh, trying to draw that purple. You keep trying to draw that purple connection, and we'll see. <laughs> oh, we oh, gotta right. see it. You know, they, they they kept bringing it up through Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and stuff too. So something something's got to be linked. Okay, with some of these people, something's got to be linked. Okay. And I, knowing Kevin Feige and all his greatness, has to be bringing something into that regarding that. Uh, eventually, we'll be leading into other things and. Uh, actually, uh, I, I know I was ridiculed by our one and only Ben Beck about talking about Secret Wars, but apparently that's something that is happening. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to something with that aspect. So I think everything is going into the multiverse as well as not just timelines, but multiverse itself hmm. and multiple different characters. So I'm curious as to what we get within the next two to three films that we get. Obviously, we're going to get uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp and the Quantum Verse mm -hmm. uh, or Quantum Mania. Yeah, Quantum yeah. Mania. And then uh, we, we're going to have She-Hulk. So, obviously, 
we're going to be exposed to more stuff within Disney Plus with uh, some former Netflix characters that we've encountered before. Probably a little bit watered down, different in looking, which would be more of Daredevil. We're definitely getting Abomination, uh, Frogman, which is new. Uh, I know Titania, or I think that's her name, from Secret Wars, the original comic run from the early 80s, 1984. So uh, I'm thinking they're kind of melding this all together to give us an end, kind of like an end game kind of movie hmm. with all these shows and everything. And that's why they're building up all these character bases. Because what do we have left after Endgame? We don't really have... We, we lost a lot of uh, great characters. You know, we don't have Captain America. We don't have Iron Man. We don't have Black Widow. Who else is missing? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm forgetting. But, you know, we don't have the original Avengers. But we're, we're building up a new rep- repertoire of uh, heroes mm-hmm. and characters. Yeah, for uh, an end game kind of movie, which probably will culminate with an end to another five years, which is pretty cool. Yeah, there's and a I, lot. I mean, there's a lot coming down. We got, like you said, Love and Thunder's out now. And, oh, yeah. And then we got She-Hulk coming up uh, and uh, Ant-Man. And it's it's going to be it's going to be a great year. And there's going to be a lot of content. And uh, we'll just have to see where they take it. We've got season two of Loki is supposed to be coming out at some oh, point. Yeah. Season two of What <laughs> If is supposed to be coming out at, at some point. Yeah, um, we got teased for that. Yeah, that, you know, that, that, that's something new that's coming out. I think with San Diego Comic-Con coming up, we're going to get more information, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, your listeners, uh, just keep your eyes out on that. They put that on Facebook. So just, uh, not Facebook, but YouTube. Mm-hmm. YouTube actually, actually has the, uh, videos that are out there when you do it live. You might not get it that very day at times unless you subscribe, but you could actually see it by like the next day and then see all the panels and everything that, uh, they have to offer. And you could see where Feige is going with this. I'm curious because the man is working so many levels because he's dealing with Spider-Man that, as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just curious when we're getting Fantastic Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't, you know, they've got a lot of stuff they announced that's coming and they only had dates on very few things and then dates get moved around and we're just going to have to see. That is true. Um, we kind of digress from the actual episode, but. Uh, the one cool aspect that I liked about the uh, the episode was uh, Kamala's mother talking about uh, tracking Kamala, and mm-hmm. and the grandmother talks about the dog, about finding yeah. the dog with the dog finder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's not a dog, and then they're like, "Oh, use oh track my phone, oh," and they figure that out. She goes, "Oh, it's like spyware for parents." <laughs> yeah. Why am I only just finding out about this now? So, yeah. and then that's that's how they were able to find them. And then, obviously, you know, they see Kamala. That was another point that I like. That it was embracing between the grandmother, mother, and Kamala at the same time. Yeah, and that's that's that moment where the mother realized that it's all true. You know, the yeah. magic, the, the magic is real, and she realizes that. You know, she said, "You're this, you're this light person." Um, to Kamala and Kamala just had to kind of go, well, yeah. And she's like, who's that boy? And then of course he runs off, but, but she uh, goes after him. And then that's yeah. when he gives her the, the scarf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I thought it was really, really done. Well, as short as this episode is, it had a lot of punch to it. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of setup for the final episode. So we're going to see what's, uh, what's going to happen further. We still got it. We still got to get, you know, Kamala reconciling with her friend, with Nakia, and all of that kind of stuff. So, well, yeah, now that Nakia is actually aware of that, you know, she mm-hmm. is this, uh, this superpowered being now. Yeah. And, you know, I'm curious, like, like I said, I- I'm shipping both, uh, Bruno and Nakia. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But, yeah, that, th- those were all my overall thoughts. This, this episode goes kind of quickly. And it's yeah. only 38 minutes long. Or mm-hmm. It's actually no more. It's like more like 36 because credits take like two yeah. minutes. Yeah. But so that's, that's what I said. It's the shortest one of the season so far. All the rest of them have been over 40. So, yeah. 
But yeah, I really did enjoy this overall. I love the history. I love key moments like we just talked about. Um, I'm looking forward to the finale, and I'm hoping the finale is not just like, oh, here, it's 46 minutes long. No, make it a little longer. You mm-hmm. kind of gypped us on this one, but you made it move fluidly. Yeah. So I, I think they're going to give us a big punch at the very end. We'll uh, see. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for Brie Larson at the end, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I would love to see the actual Captain Marvel meet Miss Marvel, mm-hmm. but um, it would be interesting if that did happen. Yep. Um, did you have any notes? Oh, uh, that's all. I, that's everything I've got. Same here. I, I don't have it. any quotes. I, I think we we kind of passed through everything. Yep, we used <laughs> all my quotes up that I uh, that I had uh, as well. So, all right, cool. So uh, we didn't get any feedback whatsoever. Facebook, audio, email, or uh, Facebook. So, uh, comic book news. Obviously, Thor: Love and Thunder. It, it's out. Let us know your thoughts. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. let us know because we'll be covering that soon at some point. So, uh, podcast recommendations. Um, yeah. you know, I, I'll go back to one that I've said before. I, I just listened to a, an older, I, you know, I, Michael Rosenbaum's inside of you or inside of oh, you, with yeah. Michael, Michael Rosenbaum is always a good podcast. I'll just kind of pull that one up and I, I'm, I subscribe to it and I download all the episodes, but I just kind of pick and choose which ones I want to listen to by who, which interview I want to see. He did another interview with Jared Padalecki, uh, oh. that, uh, that Walker cause Walker's. Oh yeah. He was talking about Walker, Texas Ranger. I listened to that no, one. Yeah. It's just Walker, just Walker. Okay. Um, whatever. It, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he was talking about Walker and there's a prequel coming out a a walker prequel coming out i guess that uh, and he you know he talked about being executive producer and how that Mm -hmm. changes kind of the way he he is regarded on the show and and what he does and so it's it's really it's an interesting interview if uh if you guys want to check that out michael rosenbaum's inside of you with michael rosenbaum awesome and to give a few shout outs uh to our friends in podcasting uh strange indeed with uh, their t- continual coverage with Stranger Things Season 4. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're coming to the finale episode soon. And I think they're uh, to the last two episodes. So I've been following them, listening to Rima and Paik. I-, I thought the last one was amazing. I'm going to be sending in uh, audio feedback because I have a lot to say about that. Nice. <laughs> uh, a lot of it had to do with metal and music and stuff like that. But that way, I'll concentrate on that. Everybody else could talk about the the show. But I did enjoy the episodes. The last two episodes we got from Stranger Things was amazing. And I'm sure that uh, Rima and Pei going to do really great with their coverage on that because I've been enjoying their take on everything since it's been coming out, uh, they've been very patient watching it episode by episode, which is like, wow, they have like true strength and not jumping ahead. Uh, also with, uh, Wilhelm, Ben's been doing a lot when it comes to interviews. So, uh, just keep up with listening to Wilhelm on the next level online radio network. So, uh, Wilhelm's coming out with more and more stuff with his interviews as well as top five, uh, you know, his top five subjects that, that come out with friends. Uh, who else? Uh, we got TV podcast industries just yes. doing yep. all their things with an umbrella Academy. Actually, they haven't even started yet. I checked. Oh, they haven't. Okay. Miss Marvel. Then I know they're doing Miss Marvel and the boys though. So yeah, they, the, I listened to Derek and Derek actually shouted you out on the last episode. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, for when they were doing The Boys, and he uh, he had stated he wanted to hear our coverage yet, which will be out. And we will be talking about, uh, and they will be covering probably around the same time as us, the Umbrella Academy, as well as Strange Indeed, because they're going to be covering it as well. So you have three podcasts you can listen to of every different take that you want. Uh, just choose your path. It's like uh, choose your path book back in the day <laughs> mm-hmm. but uh we do highly recommend them as well uh house podcast uh, they finished up obi-wan um and i really enjoyed that coverage too i had a, i loved obi-wan when it came out um i don't know if they're doing westworld but i started watching westworld last week so i don't know if you guys are interested in that kind of thing but they might cover it 
they might not, but uh, Jason has older coverage from the previous three seasons on House Podcastica, so you can check that out. Yep. And, uh, well, YouTube recommendations. Obviously, uh, I always recommend the Grim Life Collective. Jessica and Michael are actually on a co- cross-country uh, tour <laughs> and doing the coverage of, like, uh, specific sites and uh, grave sites and uh, even movie filming area locations. So check them out on the Grim Life Collective. Uh, most recently, they did, uh, I believe, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So they're in Texas. So it, not too far from uh, Paik. But uh, they they did the uh, graveyard scene from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was pretty cool. Uh, not many people get that right, but they did, and this time they filmed it properly, and Michael got good angles. Uh, for those of you that are interested in more on Miss Marvel, go to Comics Explained on YouTube with Rob, and he'll explain everything to you about Miss Marvel. And that's about it. All right. Well, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice, whether that's Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, whatever uh, platform you use. We appreciate that and appreciate the subscriptions. And as such, if you can give us a review, that would be great. We'll give you a shout out here on the podcast if you do. Well, you can check out our website, panelspixelspodcast.com, and uh, that will be up 100% by the end of July. Nice. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter at panels to pixels, and that's panels and the number two pixels. We have an email address, which is panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. You can find us on YouTube. All you have to do is search you on YouTube for panels to pixels podcast. Don't just put in panels to pixels because you'll find Josh. We're panels to pixels podcast. And if you're there and you like what we're doing, a lot of people apparently have been watching us. Uh, all it is is the podcast right now and uh, the audio with the uh, our graphics on it and played back. So if you pr- choose to actually listen to it that way, you can. Uh, just subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Like I stated before, once we get more interviews from celebrities from certain shows, we will put them up and it will be actual videos. So that way you will be more aware and you get to see us as well as the celebrity when we interview them. Nice. We are on the gram, the Instagram, which is at panels, two pixels podcast. That's panels, two pixels podcast, all spelled out in letters. And like always check out all the other podcasts on the next, next level podcast network. We highly recommend them all, especially Wilhelm with Ben Beck the Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check them out all there. There you can find all the links to them and follow them and all their podcast player choices. Excellent. Coming up, you will hear us do the finale of The Boys Season 3. I have uh, Mark and I have both already watched it, but we haven't uh, done our podcast on it yet, and it is amazing. I can't oh, wait to, to hear it. And, of course, we'll have the the finale of Ms. Marvel coming up uh, next week as well. Exactly. So where else can listener, he, listeners hear us? Well, I send voicemails to various podcasts that our friends do, as you just mentioned, with TV Podcast Industries and and others, and Strange Indeed, uh, particularly. I also send uh, my thoughts to what WTF is from. That's on the Podcastica Network. You can hear my voice there. And uh, they're wrapping up their coverage of Season 1 of From. Awesome. And you can all hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that can be found on the Pirate Car Entertainment Network. Therein, we cover action, adventure, fantasy, thrillers, suspense films, basically anything to get your adrenaline going. Uh, soon to be out, which probably be out at the same time as this, will be contact with Lizzie and I. I'm still editing. It takes a while because it was two and a half hours. <laughs> but uh, after that will be Angry Red Planet, Escape from Planet of the Apes, and then after that will be Predator with uh, Steve and I as we covered 1986's Predator. So that way we can move right in and go into the movie Prey that's going to be on Hulu. 
So check that out when they're available. All you have to do is look for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. All right. Well, everybody, same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night.